I've read that you want to potentially coach in college. And that's where I dedicated my life. I feel like we've only met for 45 minutes, but I feel like you would kill it with that era of student athletes. And because the era's changed. It's completely changed. I'm curious, where, where do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know as far as uh, where I would like to go college-wise. I just know it, it, it's something I would like to do uh, because, like you just stated, you know, with the young men that we have, the one thing that I saw a lot of in the NBA, especially the last five years, you know, with Cleveland and with uh, with the Lakers, that you, know, you get a lot of these guys that come in the league that are 19 years old, they're 20 years old, and they have no idea how to play. They they really don't. They don't understand the fundamentals of basketball. Uh, I caught myself saying this to guys on numerous occasions doing drills that you should have learned this in high school. And so I, I think our, our high school coaches are, one of the things I really think is that AAU is almost ruining the game uh, of, of basketball. These coaches are not in it for the kids, which I think is so important. You know, so by the time I get them, you know, they, they should have stayed in school four years, but obviously a lot of them are going to the pros because they need the money and they need to take care of their family. And no way in the world am I knocking that, but they don't have a clue on how to play. They don't have a clue on what the NBA is all about. They don't have a clue on what life is all about. So uh, I think I can affect, you know, a lot of the young kids because number one, I've been there. I understand, you know, what it is in the NBA, but I also understand how to uh, work on fundamentals and get guys to understand how to play the game the right way, as Larry Brown used to always say. So um, that's a, that's another passion of mine. If I could get back on the collegiate level, I don't, you know, pros, I don't want to do that. That that's, you know, that's them days are gone. But small time college or so um, so of some sort, I think, would be a lot of fun because those guys would probably stay there three or four years instead of the one and done. I had no choice. You know, when I, when I came to California and moved to Los Angeles, I, I first lived on 75th and Figueroa, which was right in the heart of all the, the hoodlums and the gangs and all that stuff. So I had, to, uh, I had to get tough real quick. You know, if I didn't, I was just going to take a beating every time, you know, uh, I came home from school. So you know, after a few beatings, you started to learn how to protect yourself a little bit better. And we moved from there to Inglewood. You know, so I had pretty much got used to uh, the Los Angeles life as far as growing up and understanding that it was uh, gang invested, you know, infested areas that I was growing up in. And I, I just started to really take to sports big time. You know, I mean, every sport I played, if it was football season, I played football. If it was basketball season, I played basketball. If it was baseball season, I played baseball. So whatever was going on was the thing that I was going to do to try to stay out of trouble, number one. That, that was the biggest reason that I tried to play sports is just to stay out of the streets and stay out of trouble. Uh, but coming from Utah was a whole different world. You know, the one good thing about coming from Utah, so just so you guys don't get it twisted, I. I came from Utah, I was six years old when I'm, my dad said, you know, you need to move him to California to play basketball. So he saw at six years old what he thought was somebody who had potential to play basketball. And so my mom uh, and my stepdad moved me to L.A. and, you know, I've been here ever since and don't plan on going anywhere. Being able to see my dad for about four or five years, go to work, uh, come home, go to sleep for a couple hours, get up get dinner, and then take off to his second job, uh, just told me how it, it, you know, he, he really told me that if you really want to, you know, do something in life, you got to work hard at it. And that was instilled in me at a very young age. So when I hit 12 years old and I won my first trophy, you know, I'm coming home with this little bitty trophy. It's no bigger than this mic, but I was so proud of it, you know, because it was the first trophy I ever won. And I walked up the, up the stairs to go in the house and my mom and dad are going out for, for a very rare, a dinner and a movie night and my uh my dad said oh that's good you got a trophy i was like yeah i got me a first trophy pops you know and my mom said you know being a mom my baby got a trophy you know my baby won a trophy and my dad said so what are you gonna do what are you gonna be in life and i said i'm gonna be a professional basketball player and again my mom was so happy you know my baby gonna play basketball you know and my dad said well what if you don't make it i said i'm gonna be a professional baseball player <laughs> So sports obviously was something that I thought I was pretty good at, and I thought I could, uh, you know, get a better life and get them to a better life if I was able to make it out of the uh, out of Inglewood. You know, when you're on the basketball floor, just like the football field, the baseball field, that's your that's your safe haven. That's where you can really be who you are, really be yourself. But um, coming from where I grew up, yeah, I was pretty shy. I just kind of, and I, I wouldn't even say I was shy to be honest with you, Yogi. I was just protective. 
you know, I had barriers that I just kind of put in front of myself because of uh, where I grew up. You just didn't trust a whole lot of people. You know, so I was quiet and everybody perceived that to be shy, but it wasn't shy. It was more of, I was just pr protecting myself uh, from people that I didn't know. You know, I was very leery of people that came by me and started speaking and wanted to do this and do that. Uh, you know, I had trust issues big time, you know, when I was growing up because I just didn't trust a whole lot of people. So when I get to Arizona State, and the only reason I went there, well, it's, it's a few reasons, but the only reason I didn't stay in state and go to UCLA or USC is because I wanted to get out and be on my own. You know, I wanted to get away from home, but I didn't want to go too far from home. You know, so the West Coast was still something that I wanted to do, but Arizona State was perfect as far as I could get back home if I had to uh, in a crisis or an emergency. Uh, but I was yet far enough away where I could still be my own man and learn on my own and make my own mistakes and grow from those mistakes as well. So um, I, I just thought Arizona State was perfect you know, for me and uh, the coaching staff and a couple of the players were from L.A., so that made it even that much more inviting. And once I took a visit there, I was like, no, I'm sold. And I told the players, Johnny Nash and Sam Williams was my recruiters. And I told them on the night they were taking me back, uh, back to the hotel, and it was about 4 in the morning because they kept me out all night partying. Um, I said, yeah, I'm coming here. And they was like, all right, cool. And so, you know, I kept my word and made, made sure that I went to Arizona State.